Hi everybody. In this video, I want to show you how to solve a formula for one of its variables. This is sometimes also called solving literal equations. So it means the same thing. Uh, but basically, many, many formulas have more than one variable in them. And it's helpful if we're able to rearrange those formulas and solve for different variables. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to use our same exact solving rules like we would for any other equation. So there's nothing new there. The only thing is you treat the variable you're solving for as sort of your main variable or your only variable. You kind of pretend everything else is just a number and just treat it like that and solve for just the one variable you're looking for. So let me show you a few examples. So here we have one formula, V equals length times width times height. And notice how right now it's solved for V, right? Because V is by itself. So we say that it's solved for V. But I'd like to rearrange this and solve for L. So I want L instead to be alone. Now I would go through my steps. If I saw parentheses, I would clear those out first. If I see fractions, I would probably clear those out first. Um, if I have any adding sub or subtracting, combining like terms, I would do that next. Um, but I don't see any of that here. I just have multiplication. So the way to get rid of this W and H, because it's being multiplied to the L, is to divide it out, right? So we'd use the opposite there. It'd be like if you were solving something like this. If I was solving 10 equals 2X, and I wanted to get X by itself, well, you would divide both sides by 2. So we're going to do the same process here, but I'm dividing by W and H. That will allow me to cancel it on the right. And then I have my formula already done. And if you want to switch sides, you can. So L is equal to V over WH. Now, one thing I will caution you in mathematics, lower and uppercase are different variables. So if you have an uppercase V here and a lowercase WH and L, and you're typing in your answers on homework and things, it has to be in the same capitalization. So same uppercase or same lowercase. If you switch your cases, you'll get the answer wrong. So it is really important to watch your cases when writing these problems and typing in your answers. For the next one, we're going to solve for x. So again, what I want to do is I want x to be alone. So I'm going to pretend like x is my only variable here, and I want that one to be by itself. So again, I don't see parentheses, I don't see fractions. So the next thing is the rearranging. So you're adding and subtracting. Now I want X to be by itself. I see an M and I see a plus B. We typically do adding and subtracting before we divide, right? So I need to get rid of this plus B first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do minus B to bring it over to the other side. And the only difference is, is that I'm just going to write it next to the Y. So I can't actually subtract y and b, right? So I'm just going to write it next to it. Now I want the x by itself again. So now let's get rid of the m and divide it out. So I have y minus b all over m is equal to x. You can also write it like this. Um, that's also considered correct, so you could split that fraction. If you don't like having a big fraction like this, just make sure each part of the numerator gets their own denominator, um, and that is also correct. I'm just going to do a few of these so you can see a couple different styles. <clears throat> so same thing here. This time we want to solve for W, so I would like W to be alone. Again, I don't see parentheses here. I don't see fractions. So I'm going to start next with the adding and subtracting. So I need W by itself. So I need to get this 2L to the other side. And it's being added in so I can subtract it from both sides. And the only thing is I can't actually subtract anything. So I'll just write it next to each other. Again, watch your capitalization. That P there is capitalized. Uh, I'm using a cursive L because my L's will look like ones, so I'm trying to distinguish it a little bit, but that's the lowercase L. And then I divide both sides by two. So I can write my answer like this. That's correct. Um, or you could also write it and split it. Uh, just be careful in this case because here you have a 2 over 2, 
that can actually be canceled. So I would write this as W is equal to P over two minus L. So you do still always wanna simplify. Um, I can't simplify it here because the P doesn't have a two uh, or anything even to cancel with. So if I have a big fraction, I'd have to cancel in all parts together. Um, here, when I separate it out, the P over two can stay, but I'm able to now cancel the twos here. So either way would be correct. Here, I don't have parentheses, but I do have a fraction. So I am gonna try to cancel out that fraction. So we're going to get rid of that five and I can do that by multiplying basically both sides by five or you know multiplying each piece by five because when you multiply that by five, you're gonna end up distributing that five on the right-hand side. So if you want to, you could sort of jump in uh, to this second step here. Now those fives are gonna cancel and then I'm gonna multiply what's left. So I have 5F is equal to 9C plus 160. Um, I'm trying to solve for C in this case, right? So C is what I'm trying to get by itself here. So I'm gonna do my adding and subtracting next. I'm gonna bring that 160 to the other side. Again, I can't actually subtract it. Oops, 5F. So I'll just write it next to each other and then I'll divide by nine. Okay, so I have five F minus 160 all over nine is equal to C. And again, this is perfectly fine. Or if you want, you could separate that 5F, maybe move this up a little bit for you guys, over 9 minus 160 over 9. Let's see, 9 goes into 16 one time. Um, and then let's see, I would have a 7 and a 0 left over. And I see I'm not going to get a nice answer here. Um, so I probably am just going to stop at this point. Um, if I try to go 9 into 70, let's see, that can go in 7 times and I get a 63. So I'm going to just keep having the seven repeated there. So I'm actually going to leave it as 160 over nine rather than writing this as a mixed number. Um, and I don't see anything else I can really uh, divide by either in common. So either way, these would be fine. All right. And one last example, this one's a little bit harder. Um, so I do see parentheses. Now there's different ways to do this. I like to always clear my parentheses first before I even think about what I'm solving for. So I would take this one half A and distribute it through. So I have capital A equals one half lowercase a times B and then plus one half lowercase a uppercase B. So again, really watch those capitalizations. Now I do see a fraction here and I see a denominator of two. So I would like to clear that out. I'm going to multiply everything through by two here. So that gets a two, this gets a two, and this gets a two, and that's going to allow me to cancel those twos on the right side. So I have two A. Um, I don't really need the one because one times A is A. So two A equals AB. And then here I have AB again, but again, watch your capitalization. All right, so now I'm solving for capital B. So I want that capital B to be alone. So I'm gonna start by getting rid of this piece over here. It's being added, so I'm gonna subtract it to both sides. And then I can finally divide by that lowercase a. So for my final answer here, um, b is equal to two a, minus a b all over a which is perfectly fine or if you do want to split that it'd be 2a over a minus a b over a i can cancel these a's here these i cannot cancel because a capital and lowercase a are different so if i want to um, simplify that i can only cancel it from this piece here and this answer is also considered correct so for the literal equations, I want you to use your same solving techniques, um, parentheses, fractions, that stuff first. Um, if you happen to see like terms, although we don't very often, um, you would do that too. 
and then typically adding and subtracting stuff next, dividing at the end. So you're focusing on that one variable. Um, if it helps you to use different colors as well to like highlight what you're solving for, that can be really helpful. Um, so I do encourage you to do that. A lot of times students know how to solve and they just solve for the wrong variable. They're not reading carefully. So just be really careful on which variable you're trying to isolate and get by itself.